Hi, Fred. Uh, we have a new uh, article that we just kind of found. Uh, actually, it was a television show called Good Morning America where Dr. Oz was on there talking about uh, genes and how it affects the mother, how it affects the baby. He was mentioning the word epigenetics, which we're very familiar with, uh, with actually a, uh, an article we found years ago called DNA is Not Destiny, but I studied down there at Duke University by a, a, a professor named Dr. Randy Jurdle, who we kind of stay in contact with. Uh, and, his, and his study kind of represented what went on with the Agati mouse in relationship to a first-generation changes that can be made from changing a lifestyle about what actually the mouse ate. Could you make some general comments on, you know, Dr. Oz's, uh, you know, uh, expression towards that, please? Well, uh, absolutely. I was very, very happy to uh, be able to watch that show. I was, actually, I was tickled pink because um, I think by uh, Dr. Raj. Uh, what he said on that show and the book that he wrote with that other doctor, Dr. Royce and I believe, it's going to be able to av avail more people to be aware of this information because epigenetics is really uh, the new cellular biology that we've become aware of in the last uh, 10 to 15 years and more and more people are really taking a good look at this. Years ago they thought that 70 to 75 percent of our disease eventually was going to happen because of our genetic expression but now the new cellular biologists uh, are making us aware that's probably not the case. It's probably only 5 to 10 percent, and the rest of it is genetic expression. Now, genetic expression is controlled by the thoughts, our spiritual beliefs, the thoughts we entertain, our environment, plastics, uh, pollution, greenhouse gases. People are talking about greenhouse gases. All this has to do with our genetic expression. Whatever... Um, Whatever the, the, uh, our bodies are exposed to, the thoughts we entertain, as I said before, there's certain switches and markers outside the cell that can turn off certain genes that are detrimental to our health or turn on other genes that could be positive to help us recover from serious diseases or to prevent these diseases. So this is an amazing, amazing uh, um, new advancement in cellular biology. Dr. Stephen Meyer wrote a great book on the um, on this on this subject. Um, Signature in the cell. Signature in the cell and the case of intelligent design. A fabulous book. I think the guy is the man is a brilliant guy, and I think we should see more of people like him on television too, because I think these are the people that have actually um, brought this science to the forefront and. Uh, that I believe that it's great that Dr. Raj can take this and bring it to the public, but um, I, was, I have factored this into what I do about 10 years ago, and I was talking about cellular biotics and its uh, um, cellular expression. It's in my new book about epigenetics. Epigenetics, the word epigenetic means comes from outside the cell, not inside the cell. The old cellular biology thought it, everything came from inside the cell. Now we realize that the membrane of the cell is the brain of the cell and the switches and the markers are what determine what gets into the cell and activates the DNA. That is the important thing. We actually have some control over our DNA expression now. The rejuvenation, the replication of healthy cells has a lot to do with, the, with epigenetics. Remember, epigenetics means it comes from outside the cell. We have large a large control of what comes from outside the cell so it's it's a great thing that more and more people are becoming aware of it uh, women that are planning on having children should take a look at a good look at a lifestyle change because it could enhance the quality of the of the, uh, the child that they're going to be given birth to it could change a lot of situations there's a very good chance we could be avoiding a lot of the diseases that um, children are having, that they're, they're born with. There's an epidemic of different diseases that uh, children are uh, uh, being born with now and that there's a very good chance with epigenetics and uh, lifestyle change we can avoid a great deal of these uh, circumstances. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, and also Dr. Oz talked about, uh, you know, the, how chemi environmental chemicals can influence your genetics, such as plastics, you know, making sure that you have the two and the four numbered bottle, plastic bottles, as well as, uh, you know, watching out for microwave plastics and things like that, which is also good advice. And then just give a brief comment about uh, looking back transgenerationally 
because uh, Dr. Oz generally talked about that from the famine from years ago and how it influences the genetic switches. If you're not aware of that's where you came from. So just comment a little bit transgenerationally about epigenetics, please. Well, I, I believe that uh, there's um, <clears throat> more profound things that happen with transgenerational disorders. So, uh, for instance, we look at the uh, American Indian, what happened to the American Indian, we took them out of their culture, that they were living in a certain culture for thousands of years, and they now they have, of course, of uh, genetic expression, I believe genetic expression had a lot to do with this. They couldn't make that change. It was so dramatic, um, the way it was done, and they run into a lot of difficulty uh, with, you know, type 2 diabetes, and they run into a problem with alcoholism. On a recent trip to Australia, I saw the same thing happen with the, uh, um, the Aboriginal people. They're having the same kind of problems the American Indian had. They took them out of a culture that for thousands of years, they were living a certain type of a lifestyle. They were, they were doing very well. They were living under the harshest conditions and thriving. They were doing much better than the average American is doing. We changed them in one generation. They had a, dramatic, had a dramatic impact on them in one or two generations. The body could not sustain that dramatic a change. And what happens, they developed the same type of problems. Type 2 diabetes, alcoholism, they lost their culture, they lost their hope, and I believe that those people like that could definitely be helped. My hope is to go back to Australia, because you can reverse transgenerational disorders. Once you understand the, the new cellular biology, and lifestyle changes, it's not that difficult to reverse these type of conditions with people that are open to reversing it. So there are many, many uh, cases where you look at the world epidemiologically where people were deprived of food or certain things happened where we saw uh, changes that were really epigenetic that took place in a matter of 10 or 15 years. Thanks, Fred. And the final thing that Dr. Oz did mention that was uh, you know, every pregnant woman should take a good multi, a multivitamin uh, mineral as well as omega-3 and folic acid. So, you know, generally, just give me a, an ending comment for you, for you could on that. Well, I, I think most people are doing that right now. I think when uh, any um, uh, pregnant woman, when they go to their uh, doctor, they tell them to, to take a, um, a multivitamin. Now, there's a the study done at Duke University that shows that certain nutrients that were... Uh, in certain foods actually helped improve, enhance a woman's uh, genetic expression. I think they were methylated, uh, foods that were methylated, enhanced the um, uh, genetic expression. So you can't go wrong by taking a good multivitamin. But we, we, another thing I would like to mention here is that not all vitamins are the same. You want, you want to make sure that you're taking a good, a high quality multivitamin if you're going to take a multivitamin. There's a lot of uh, vitamins out there that are not high quality at all and they might be working more as chemicals and they could actually be detrimental to what you're trying to accomplish if you're trying to accomplish genetic expression. It might be uh, turning uh, off the right switches and turning on the wrong switches. So you have to, we have to take a good look at that. There has to be more research. All vitamins are not the same. If the, uh, it depends upon you know, what the, uh, how they're put together, what the source is. Um, a lot of synthesized uh, vitamins do, are not going to work as well as uh, a low dose, it's high quality um, raw food or natural food uh, type of vitamin. So be discreet, make sure that you're getting a, a good multivitamin. You're not buying one of these cheaper multivitamins that could be a detriment rather than an asset. Thanks a lot, Fred. And uh, for those looking for a good multi-mineral multivitamin made from... Uh, raw food, as well as fruit and vegetables, just go to our website at www.fredbishyforhealth.com and check out the innate formulations and comment on any of the video blogs that we have. Also, if you'd like to join our email list, just put your name right on there and we'll send you out information. Thanks a lot and have a good day.